Songwriting for me has always been uh, a kind of therapy. It helps me to understand myself and my place within the world. I normally have to have some really strong emotional kind of um, catalyst, if you like, um, in order to be able to write a song. I have to be emotionally involved in whatever it is I'm writing about. And so it's very rare that I'll write a song to order, um, but that's pretty much how it kind of came about with Petricor. Petricor is the title track from our new album. And for those of you that are unfamiliar with the term Petricor, it's a, a scientific term used to describe that, um, that really lovely earthy smell that you get when it rains after a, a long dry period. The term was coined by two Australian scientists in 1964, um, Isabel Baer and Dick Thomas. Prior to that moment, it was known as argillaceous odor. Um, which doesn't have the same kind of ring to it. So I'm glad that those guys decided to call it something new. Uh, the idea for the song kind of came about, uh, we were having uh, some meandering conversations in the van on our way up to a gig, as we do, and it was during the summer. So it had been dry and hot for, for a good few days, uh, and then it suddenly rained. And then of course, Petricor occurred, and Phil kind of went, ah, oh, Petricor. And I was like, yeah, dude, nice. And uh, Tammy said, um, what does Petricor mean? So we just described what it meant. Um, and then later on, we were having a conversation, which had been kind of ongoing for a few days, actually, uh, about what we should call the album. And I can't remember which one of us it was, but um, one of us said, uh, how about Petricor? And Phil was of the mind where, yeah, of course, it would be a great title, but we need to have a title track in order to justify calling the album that, you know? Um, so I, I held my hand up and said, I'll write that one. Um, I felt that I needed to sort of challenge myself or, or kind of set myself on a slightly different course because uh, the last two songs I'd written, Old Man of the Sea and um, Best Foot Forward, those have kind of come from a place of hurt. Um, and uh, I was kind of a little bit emotionally exhausted, uh, creatively speaking. So it, I figured it would be quite nice to sort of attach myself to a project that I wasn't so emotionally involved in. Um, uh, so yeah, I went off, uh, I spent a couple of weeks coming up with lots of different and pretty ways of, of describing um, rain and um, an aroma, but I found that I had nothing to sort of tie it all together with, you know, it was just a description of a phenomenon and there was nothing there that was going to draw in the listener in, uh, uh, and get them to invest emotionally, you know. Uh, and so I sort of really struggled to find something then. Uh, and then, and then the Queen died. We have some very important news. Buckingham Palace has just announced that Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II has died. I'm not a royalist. Um, I'm neither for nor against, to be honest. So I was really, really surprised when, uh, upon hearing the news of the Queen's death, I became quite emotional I, I actually became quite upset and I, I couldn't understand why and after you know a few days of thinking about it I kind of came to the conclusion that uh, it was the fact that you know the Queen had, had been there my whole life you know she was already the Queen when I was born and you know for, for 50 years you know she has been in the background of my life but then suddenly that background had completely disappeared and um, and when something constant disappears from your life that you're just not expecting, um, it can bring a sense of fear because um, it's a sign of change. You know, things are going to be different now. Um, and that's that can be a little bit scary, you know. And, and I think that that's I think for me, it was the shock of losing that that constant thing that had always been in the background of my life, you know, and it, it was a shock that upset me. Um, and so with that in mind, I kind of felt now that I had something that I could apply to Petrico as a song because um, the way I saw it, the song's not about the Queen dying. The song is about transition and um, it's about that um, ambivalence uh, of, you know, feeling two emotions at once where on the one hand, you know, you're mourning the loss of something and on the other hand, there's this excitement for things to come. And it's a strange mixture of emotions to, to experience at the same time. And that's the thread I used to sort of tie it all together. You can have a really long dry period of weather 
um, really hot weather, and then when there's a sudden downpour, it's like that's a transition. It's a sign of, of different weather to come. So the death of the Queen kind of gave me um, an emotional catalyst, I guess, um, that allowed me to um, explore those emotions and, and tie them in with a song. As for the actual uh, production of the song, apart from me going in and putting down my acoustic guitar parts and singing the lead vocal, um, and then the guys putting their harmony vocals on, um, Phil pretty much had full reign on this song. He uh, he did the drums, he did the bass. Um, Tam learnt the bass later on so that we could play it live. Um, you know, he did all the instrumentation on it pretty much, um, and he did a really really good job. Um, on the middle eight part, when it when it starts to talk about the death of the Queen and people lining up on the streets, um, you know, Phil came up with the idea of of putting in a sort of military kind of regimented beat on the drums to kind of help conjure up that that imagery of like all the guards lined up outside Buckingham Palace, you know, that kind of thing. And it was a great idea. Um, uh, I wasn't keen on the on the I say first take. I think it took him about a million takes to to get the entire thing. And, and I loved it up until that point. It, there was something about it that just didn't sit right with me, you know. Um, uh, and this is a testament to how good it is to work with these guys. Um, is that, you know, we, we do our best to leave our ego at the door, you know. So if, if one of us isn't happy with a particular bit, we, you know, we, we try and say so, you know. And it all comes from a place of love, you know. And that's what we try and remember, you know, when whenever any of us have to sort of critique anything you know um and so you know phil took it really well you know i could see he was like oh my god i've got to do about another million takes now uh so i went in and, and sat and and engineered for him i say engineered i pressed the record button um <laughs> but um yeah it, he actually got it a lot quicker and he just played it he just worked out a much more loose kind of way of doing it it was just a hundred percent better and i loved it so um yeah he did a cracking job so well done phil so anyway, at the beginning of this video, I said um, that this was um, one of those rare occasions when I've written a song to order. But uh, as I've talked, I've kind of realised that it might have started out that way. But then it kind of became a part of me and I became a part of it. So no different than my other songs, really. If you've not heard Petrical yet, it's probably because you've not heard the album. Um, so give it a listen. It's, it's on the interwebs in all the places. So... Um, yeah, let us know what you think. Magical.